question from 2013 about uh, friction. So they are applying a force of F horizontal. And uh, so for a given value of F, the resultant force R exerted on the surface on, on the box, uh, exerted by the surface on the box at uh, makes an angle theta with the horizontal direction as shown in the figure. The variation of theta with F is uh, best represented by. So now the, the, the box is kept on a rough horizontal surface and a horizontal force is applied on the box. Now this R is the resultant force exerted by the uh, table on the box resultant force. So we have to think of all the forces which which can uh, which which are all the forces exerted by the table on the box. Then only we'll be able to analyze this properly. Let me quickly consider draw another diagram where uh, where we can analyze this even clearer. Right. So on a rough surface we have kept an object. Right. And uh, F is applied and F is gradually increased as you can see in all the graphs. F, uh, sorry, F is gradually increased. The value of F is gradually increased. So I'll just draw F because it's a, big, uh, it's a force which is applied. It's given in the diagram and a horizontal force. And they're increasing F gradually from zero. When you apply a horizontal force on an object like this, we all know that there will be two forces acting on this uh, box, which are given by the table. One is obviously the perpendicular reaction because the table and the uh, box are in contact. Therefore, perpendicular to the surface, the perpendicular reaction will be acting. So for that, I will use the letter N, normal reaction, because R is already used. We normally use R, but I'll use N because R is a resultant of the two forces. And obviously there'll be another force and that would be friction. Because when you apply the horizontal force F to the left, the box will attempt to move in the right side, right direction. Uh, therefore, box will uh, try to stop it from moving, therefore, uh, this will happen. So, give me a second. Right. This is the frictional force. Now, there's a reason why I'm drawing the frictional force like this. Okay. Now, these are the two forces. This is friction. I'll put FF now. We don't know whether it is a limiting frictional force or dynamic frictional force uh, because uh, there, there, there can be a point where the object is moving, there can be a point where the object is at rest. So, initially, at the beginning, the object will be at rest, really. So the R they're talking about is the resultant of these two. Hope you all can understand. Is the resultant of these two. The resultant of these two. So I'll draw it in another color. And that is R. That is the R they're talking about. Resultant of N and SF. Normal reaction and friction force. Right. And there's another force which you, we shouldn't be forgetting. And that would be the weight of the uh, object. So I'll use another color for the weight, maybe the black color. And uh, yep, because weight is like uh, it's a fixed force. It's a fixed force. It's a fixed force weight. So this is mg. All right. And we definitely know that uh, n is equal to mg. Before that, I'll just mention the fact that r is resultant of resultant of n and ff. Now, listen. There are uh, there are these three are not three different forces. R is the resultant of the red color forces. Keep that in mind. Huh? Right. So you can either draw N and FF. If not, you can erase to both of them and draw only R. And this is the angle theta they're talking about. Right. So uh, resultant of N and FF is R and N is equal to MG always. Remember this R is not another force to take component of that. It is the resultant of N and FF. So N is the upward force which is acting in the system. That should be equal to the downward force. So N is constant. N is a constant value. Okay, right. N is a constant value. Uh, now we know when F is increased, when F is increased, now what's going to happen? When if when, when F is increased from zero, actually, F is increased from zero, because you can see in the diagram F is increased from zero. Uh, when F is increased from zero, um, what will happen uh, when F is increased from zero? Um, F, F will increase. F, F will increase until when? F, F will increase until, wait a minute, F, F will increase until uh, 
if it will increase until um, until uh, SF or else if applied force equals limiting frictional force. Okay, so let's say the limiting frictional force is like uh, 10 Newton for the system. When you apply one Newton, FF will be one. When you apply two Newtons, FF will be two. When you apply three Newtons, FF will be three. Until you make this 10, FF will also increase and it will become 10. And when you make it 11, then the object will start moving. Then the frictional force will reduce a little and it will become uh, the dynamic frictional force. When F is greater than FL, what will happen? The limiting friction, so frictional force will become equal to dynamic frictional force and the FT will remain constant. We all have learned that under friction. When the object starts moving, the frictional force will remain constant regardless of the magnitude of applied force. So this is what happens. Now, as you increase F, this is what's going to, I will draw one by one, uh, I mean, step by step. N will remain same, N won't change, the magnitude of N will not change, but FF at the beginning, it will be small. And then when I increase F a little bit more, FF will increase even uh, a bit more. N, but N is constant, okay, because N is equal to mg. And I increase F more, uh, no, when F is increased, when F is increased, right, when F is increased, we know N will not change, N is the normal reaction will not change because that is equal to mg, but FF will keep changing until the object starts moving. FF will keep changing like this. Right. So let's say this is the point where FF becomes equal to what limiting frictional force? So until this, the value of uh, FF will increase. Until this, the value of FF will increase. And after that, what will happen? Uh, no matter how much you increase F, your value of the friction will be FD, no matter how much FF is released after that. So here, until this is uh, until this, the object is not moving. Object at rest. And here, object moves. So once the object moves, what will happen? This will remain constant. This will not change. FD constant regardless of FL. Right, now see, uh, they are talking about uh, the theta. Theta is the angle created by the resultant force with the horizontal, right? So I'll draw theta, so R for all, each of these cases. In this one, R will be like this. We know how to draw R. We have to consider the, you know, parallel logo and draw R and look and see the value of theta, it's a large value. And then as FF increases, R will slant like this further. R will be slanting like this further and further. And you can see what is happening with the angle. Angle theta keeps reducing gradually. It keeps reducing gradually. And see in this one, it is the maximum uh, possible uh, value for FL. So that is the maximum possible value for R you can have. And then theta. Theta keeps reducing, reducing, reducing. And this, uh, this is the point where theta will be the uh, lowest. And after that, after this point, you can see there will be a slight increase of theta. Because I'll just uh, name this now, I'll put it as theta L. Theta L is the value where the limiting frictional or limiting friction was reached. And this is going to be, I'll just put it as theta D because uh, now the object has started moving, which are started moving. Theta D will be slightly bigger than theta L. What's the reason? Because this length of force must be somewhat shorter than this length because this is the limiting frictional force, whereas this is the uh, dynamic friction force. All right. So as you can see, the value of theta should reduce and then there must be a small pickup like thing because the object is starting to move. When the object starts to move, there'll be a slight change in the frictional force. So then uh, it will remain constant. So accordingly, we, this is definitely wrong because in this one, theta is increasing. In this one and this one, theta is reducing, but they are wrong because this part is not there. That bump is not there. That bump is important because why is that? Un until the object doesn't move, until the object doesn't move, the friction will keep increasing. After the object moves, friction will slightly reduce. So that bump must be uh, observed here. So the answer is either first or second. Now the problem is theta with uh, theta and uh, yeah, we, had, we are plotting the graph for theta. Theta is the angle created by the resultant force with horizontal. It is not going to vary linearly. It's not going to vary linearly. Uh, it is definitely going to vary, what do you call that, uh, non-linearly. Because, uh, for example, if you want me to just uh, explain you with an example with numbers, huh? imagine uh, n is 3 
and then you have the f is one. When f is one, f f is also one. When f is one, f f is also one. Correct. When the object is not moving, but this will remain as three, and then now this will be uh, f f if f is equal to two, f f is also equal to two, and then you go to the other one. This is three. This is three, and this uh, f is equal to f f, and that is equal to three. And uh, still n we don't change. We keep increasing in uh, this thing. So this is now f equal f f that is equal to four. It keeps on uh, growing like that, right? So look at the value of f f huh? one two three four. Likewise. Now what is this angle? This the resultant here r, and this angle will be exactly how much? Uh, forty five. This angle will be forty five because it is three and three. Now here we have three and one. So if you want to find the angle there, uh, I'll just put the values for you. For your clarity, you now some of you might not agree with me. Uh, uh, you will need proof. Why? How we see the curve, not a straight line. I give you. Let me give me give you that proof. Uh, now, for if you take this one, it is uh, now if you take the angle here as theta, it is actually tan inverse three, tan inverse three. So that will be how much? Uh, that will be around um, roughly. Uh, seventy one, roughly seventy one or seventy two. Let's say this is seventy two, roughly. All right. And here we have a theta. We are tan theta is three over two, one point five. Tan theta one point five. So roughly, can we say? Okay. Uh, it's around tan fifty six. Tan fifty six. So when f is one, theta is seventy two. When f is two, theta is fifty six. When f is three, theta is forty five. It is not varying linearly, correct? Here, yeah, look at the gap between them, sixteen. Look at the gap between them, eleven. Uh, and I'll give you this value also. Now, what is tan? Now, tan theta. If you take this as theta, theta tan theta is equal to zero point seven five. So that would be zero point seven five. That would be let's say thirty-eight, um, maybe no, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-seven. This thirty-seven. This angle is thirty-seven. So these are ex almost exact values. So when when I increase f uniformly, one, two, three, four. Look at the values of theta. Now look at the values of theta. If if uh, if n is equal to three newton, and uh, if n is equal to three newton, when f is equal to one, f is equal to two, f is equal to three. Sorry, f is equal to four. The values of theta. I will write them down. Then you will be able to write. So theta first one is around seventy-two. Uh, theta first well, the second one is around fifty-six, and uh, next one is around forty-five, and next one is around uh, thirty-seven. But when you do an MCQ like this, people, you can't uh, keep doing this. You should have the common sense to understand that uh, the angle will not change linearly. You can draw one or two like this, and you should be able to understand. It angle is tan inverse, so tan inverse can't linearly change. So you should have that common sense. Uh, so this is look at the gap between them, sixteen. Then it's eleven. Then it's eight. Then yeah, therefore it's not definitely linear. This is the best graph. This is the best graph. Answer will be second to this question.